Call the member for Hughes. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The member for Sydney had the audacity to mention the word mendacity about this MPI. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, this MPI, which the, the opposition titled the government's failure to properly fund schools and their repeated statement that the government is cutting funding from schools, and I'm sorry to say this word in the chamber, Deputy Speaker, but it is a lie. The whole basis of Labor's argument on education is now fundamentally based on a mistruth. The policy that they can go on, and if they can tell a lie over and over and over and over again, Deputy Speaker, that will hopefully somehow resonate with the public. Well, I say shame on every one of you. At least come into this chamber and tell the truth about what is happening to school funding. And the truth is, Deputy Speaker, that under this government, where we are at record levels, we are now spending $20 billion more than the previous Labor government. Funding for education under this coalition government is 25 per cent higher. So do not come into this chamber or worry, run around your electorates and spread the lie that the coalition is cutting funding to education. It is completely, utterly untruth. It is a lie, Deputy Speaker, and I'm sorry to say that word in this chamber. But, Deputy Speaker, what we need to concentrate on, we know that funding is important, and that's why this coalition government has education funding at record levels. But, Deputy Speaker, it's not just about the funding. We have to make sure that we are teaching our kids skills and talents that will do them well, Deputy Speaker, once they leave school. And, Deputy Speaker, I would like to just highlight one thing that's actually being taught in our schools at the moment under called Building Respectful Relationships. And I'd like to let the House know this is something that's being taught in our schools. And if we wonder why we are behind countries like Kazakhstan, could I put to you, Deputy Speaker, that this is one of the reasons why. This is a role-playing game that girls in Year 9 have dropped it. Girls in Year 9. And they are given character Member cards, Deputy Speaker. Quiet. And this is what a girl in Year 9 is asked to play one of the characters. They can play the character of Megan. And this is the description of what they're told to learn about Megan, the character they play. Megan is 17. She lives in the city and works at a local cafe. She has had 15 sexual partners and describes herself as bisexual. She has casual sex and some short-term partners, including two women. She rarely practices safe sex. She, f she forgets to protect herself because she's often drunk when she has sex. Deputy Speaker, that is what our children are being taught to role play. Another one, Deputy Speaker, they could play a girl called Grace. Grace is 16 and in year 10. And remember, this is a year nine girl playing this. She has been sexually active since Bruce she was 13. Or there's another one called Kelly, Deputy Speaker. This is what a year nine girl is asked to role play in our schools today, and you wonder why our education is going backwards. Kelly is 14 and she's in year nine. She's very interested in girls, but she is not sure. She thinks she might be a lesbian. Kelly quotes, I think I'm a lesbian, but I'm not sure because I've also been attracted to a boy. I guess this gives me more options than most. Now, Deputy Speaker, members of the opposition laugh at this. And this may very be funny for blokes drinking down the pub, but this is what is being taught to year nine girls in our schools today, and we wonder why. We wonder why we are going backwards. Now, Deputy Speaker, we would like to have as much funding for education as we can. And as the Deputy uh, Opposition Leader talked about in this debate, was about the, the so-called cuts that we are making or the changes that we are making to the company tax rate. And Deputy Speaker, I would like to quote a passage from a book from the Shadow Treasurer, Hearts and Minds. He actually has a separate chapter here, Deputy Speaker, under the heading, Promoting Growth Through Cutting the Company Tax. And I'll quote exactly from his book. I'm sure the other members might like to know what your shadow treasurer thinks about cutting company tax. And he says, one of the more controversial reforms by Paul Keating as treasurer was slashing the corporate tax rate from 49% to 39% in 1989. I was a fresh face, this is the shadow treasurer, I was a fresh faced Labor Party branch member at the time, and I recall the party as a whole being incredulous that a Labor government would cut the tax rate for, quote, fat tax companies. I remember a motion by the Young Labor Conference calling for the corporate tax rate to be lifted 60 per cent to pay for a program for social reform. Well, Speaker, what actually happened when Keating cut the company tax rate? Deputy Speaker, we know when he cut that company tax rate from 39 per cent 
down to 30, sorry, 49 per cent down to 39 per cent. We didn't lose one cent of corporate tax. We actually, within four years, Deputy Speaker, we were getting 60 per cent more revenue at 39 per cent than we were at 49 per cent. And that has happened every time throughout our history. Time has expired.